Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be addressing a question that many fans have likely asked themselves, and that is, why on earth did Harry just drop the Resurrection Stone in the Forbidden Forest? After he had possession of it, why didn't he hold on to it for longer? The Resurrection Stone is of course one of the fabled Deathly Hallows, stemming from the tale of the three brothers, Antioch, Cadmus, and Ignotus. The brothers were all members of the famous Peveril family. The plot surrounds the three wizard brothers and their ability to cheat death for a short period of time. After conquering death, a personification of death, under the guise of congratulating them, awarded them with three gifts. The Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Invisibility Cloak. Long story short, each brother chose one of the gifts that death had presented them. Ignotus, the youngest, chose the Invisibility Cloak. Cadmus, the middle brother, chose the Resurrection Stone, and Antioch, the eldest, chose the Elder Wand. Here's an excerpt from the tale of the three brothers. Then, the second brother, who was an arrogant man, decided that he wanted to humiliate death still further, and asked for the power to recall others from death. So death picked up a stone from the riverbank, and gave it to the second brother, and told him that the stone would have the power to bring back the dead. It has actually been expressed that Cadmus is a direct descendant of the Gaunt family, as they held the stone in their family for years after his demise. There are many unknown owners of the stone, including Death, who manufactured it, Cadmus Peveril, generations of unknown Gaunts, Morfin, Marvolo, Tom Riddle, and many more. And eventually the stone was in Harry Potter's possession, and it is Harry Potter who we see let it slip from his fingers in the following passage from chapter 34 of the Deathly Hallows. I thought he would come, said Voldemort in his high, clear voice, his eyes on the leaping flames. I expected him to come. Nobody spoke. They seemed as scared as Harry, whose heart was now throwing itself against his ribs, as though determined to escape the body he was about to cast aside. His hands were sweating as he pulled off the invisibility cloak and stuffed it beneath his robes, with his wand. He did not want to be tempted to fight, I was, it seems, mistaken, said Voldemort. You weren't, Harry said it as loudly as he could, with all the force he could muster. He did not want to sound afraid. The resurrection stone slipped from between his numb fingers, and out of the corner of his eye, he saw his parents, Sirius and Lupin, vanish as he stepped forward into the firelight. At that moment, he felt that nobody mattered but Voldemort. It was just the two of them. So, you may ask, why would Harry simply drop an artifact created by death himself? The stone, after all, is said to be the only object that would bring back the spirits of the holder's deceased loved ones, activating when turned three times in the user's hand. Seems like a lot of power. Harry, of course, uses it to summon the images of his loved ones. And while the stone was initially thought to bring back the dead in totality, in reality, it only brings back a shade of these people. It has been expressed that the shades produced are less substantial than living bodies, but much more than ghosts, and Harry even went on to describe them as transparent, producing a Patronus-like effect that helps shield him against Dementors. Essentially, the stone's inability to properly cheat death was death's way of punishing the arrogant Peveril brother. It just gave people a sample of what it would be like to be reunited with these people, and in Cadmus's case, he killed himself to properly be with the girl that he loved once more. Harry doesn't have any interest in keeping the stone for a number of reasons. The first reason being that Harry never had any intention or ambition of becoming the master of death. One who possesses all three hallows, the Resurrection Stone, Invisibility Cloak, and Elder Wand, is thought to hold this title, but only if they are able to accept that death is inevitable. Dumbledore was very explicit with Harry when he explained that Voldemort's fear of death an attempted mastery over it was the primary root of all of his evil, and Harry wanted no part of that at all. Harry just wanted to live a peaceful, normal life with his loved ones, and had no grand aspirations of cheating death or becoming immortal. Additionally, Harry was simply done with the stone. He had gotten the use out of it that he required and did not need it anymore. It served no purpose to him as a hallow, and he likely felt that, as just another rock on the forest floor, probably wasn't a threat to anyone. In the following excerpt, Harry confirms with Dumbledore that he left the stone in the forest, and has no interest in returning for it. 
The thing that was hidden in the snitch, he began. I dropped it in the forest. I don't know exactly where, but I'm not going to go looking for it again. Do you agree? My dear boy, I do, said Dumbledore, while his fellow pictures looked confused and curious. A wise and courageous decision, but no less than I would have expected of you. Does anybody else know where it fell? No one, said Harry, and Dumbledore nodded his satisfaction. J.K. Rowling would later add, when asked about whether or not the stone would ever be found, I think not. I imagine that it was squashed into the ground by a centaur's hoof, as the centaurs dashed to the aid of the Hogwarts fighters, and thereafter became buried. And that's it for this video. I hope that helps to address the question of why Harry would just drop the stone. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, you're a wizard Harry!